So again, thank you everyone for coming out. Um, it's nice to see the turnout today, um, especially because Instagram is so um, highly demanded with this new features. Um, it's definitely a platform that's been on everyone's radar. And based on the questions that we received, um, we definitely do have a lot to uh, cover here today. And just before we do get into how to use Instagram for your business, I'm just going to go over some housekeeping. Um, so this webinar is being recorded um, and um, the webinar recording along with the presentation slides um, will be um, available to you after our webinar today. So a follow-up email will be sent with the presentation um, and a notice on when the webinar recording will be up on our website. We will also be having a Q&A session um, at the end of our webinar. So please feel free to ask any questions while we are presenting in our chat. Um, it should be located on your WebEx screen to the right in the chat section. Uh, please select all panelists when entering your comment or question so that everyone on the panel uh, can see your question and answer. So we will be, however, having a dedicated Q&A at the end of the presentation. Um, any links that we have to provide will also be dropped in the chat um, section. So just a little bit about, um, about us. So this webinar is available to you by the City of Mississauga's uh, Mississauga Business Enterprise Center, better known as MBAC. Um, and we are here as part of the Economic Development Office um, at the city. So our focus here is really to support the small businesses in Mississauga. We are the central source that you can contact to help you uh, find information, resources, and guidance. And we do run several business programs as well, um, which are here again to support our, our small business owners. We have our staff here as well, um, um, and we have an abundance of resources um, available to you um, as well. Uh, so you can head on over to mississauga.ca slash MBAC to get more details. Um, and if you honestly do not find what you are looking for, um, you can contact a team member through the online form that we have available on our website and we will be more than happy to help. So as for introductions, um, so firstly, my name is Amanpreet Baines and I'm the project coordinator for the City of Mississauga's uh, Digital Main Street program, which I will speak a little bit uh, more about in just a moment. Uh, with me on the webinar today, however, I have um, uh, Laura Dunkley, um, who is um, a, probably a super familiar face, I'm sure, to many of us, and uh, you are probably used to having her host. So Laura is our digital marketing consultant for the city. Um, she has uh, knowledge running her own business and as well as, of course, digital marketing. So she will be joining us um, in exploring Instagram um, uh, today uh, to use for our businesses. And lastly, we have our uh, speaker today and our subject matter um, expert, um, uh, Sahana. So Sahana is part of the Digital Main Street team. Um, and, um, and she is a part of uh, five other digital experts. Uh, who help Main Street businesses in Mississauga onboard uh, digital technology and tools. So she will be leading our webinar today as part of our Digital Main Street initiative to share our expertise and knowledge on all things digital media to our business community. So uh, just briefly, what exactly is Digital Main Street? So Digital Main Street itself is a nonprofit organization that helps Main Street businesses achieve uh, digital transformation. So this means we take your existing business processes or customer experiences, um, and with the use of digital technologies and tools, we create new or modified uh, business processes and experiences for customers, and it's all things digital. So the program itself is built um, around an online uh, learning platform with structured training programs and includes other programs such as Shop Here um, and the Digital Service Squad. Um, and the Digital Service Squad is the initiative under Digital Main Street that we are leading here specifically. So, um, so Sahana and I, along with four other team members, are dedicated to help our Main Street businesses with enhancing uh, their online presence. Um, and so Mississauga is actually no stranger to this program. This is our second year running the program. And as far as what and who the Digital Service Squad is, um, so as mentioned, it is made up of five um, digital experts who deliver one-on-one -on -one assistance to our Main Street small businesses um, within Mississauga's five BIAs. So this includes Clarkson, Cooksville, Malton, Port Credit, and Streetsville. 
So the Digital Service Squad is, is essentially a free digital resource to help you grow your business uh, by adopting um, and implementing digital tools and technologies. So just quickly, uh, some of our roles and responsibilities um, is to have you complete uh, the Digital Main Street registration uh, that is paired with our free online digital assessment of your business. So this really helps us uh, structure together areas um, in which your business is accelerating and areas where there is room for improvement. From here, we can then complete an audit of your digital presence and various digital uh, uh, properties. So whether that's the use of your website or social media platforms and more. Uh, we can also assist business owners in applying for Digital Main Street's uh, Digital Transformation Grant, um, uh, which is um, a grant of $2,500 by assisting uh, you in the application process. So it's important to note here that we don't uh, administer the grant money, but rather assist the business owners in applying. So whether it's helping you break down possible expenses and costs for your digital needs, uh, maybe identifying objectives and even key performance metrics, uh, to better inform your digital uh, strategy. And um, lastly, um, but certainly not least, we also assist in reviewing, um, <clears throat> for instance, <clears throat> your uh, Google My Business page. Um, and we do also take complimentary uh, 360 photos of your business to, again, enhance your profiles. Um, and we do provide additional support one-on-one -on -one again. Um, and so if you have any questions or want to get free digital help, um, and if you're a Main Street business owner, please visit our website at mississauga.tv slash digital Main Street or uh, contact us directly at our email. Um, and just before we move on with the presentation, um, just again wanted to mention some additional digital services that we have. Um, so here I have listed um, Mississauga Made. Um, so if you haven't already listed your business on Mrs. Agamade's website, definitely should. This is an online marketplace which was launched this year um, as a result of COVID-19 recovery support in an effort to inspire all of us uh, to support and promote local uh, businesses across the city. So here you'll find a place for yourself to join the, the online marketplace um, and as well at the same time for you to discover the community that's online um, on the marketplace. So whether you're selling products, services, or if you're an artist, and if you want to even find out any activities that are going on in Mississauga, uh, definitely a resource that you should check out. Um, and also just wanted to briefly mention that they have launched their um, Shop Local for the Win campaign. So now until December 31st, if you shop, buy, or order from local businesses, um, online or in person, uh, you can enter uh, to win one of 20 um, $100 uh, Visa prepaid gift cards. So you can do that on mississaugamade.ca. Uh, secondly, we have our business um, advisory services. Um, so if you need um, help, whether it's with accounting, legal, business operations, uh, sales, or even digital marketing, uh, we now offer uh, free consultations with professionals um, in these areas. And the form, again, can be found on our website. And then lastly, um, uh, MBEC also offers free digital marketing support. So um, there are free one-on-one -on -one consultations available with Laura, our digital marketing consultant. Um, and we also offer business support programs uh, such as Starter Company Plus. And then also, uh, in addition, we have our webinars as the one that we are doing today um, along with past webinar recordings, which are also available um, on our website. And speaking of webinars, just wanted to bring uh, to everyone's attention some of our upcoming ones. So we have how to build your business using content marketing next Thursday. We have also um, how to use stories on social media as well as how to use Canva for business. All right. Hi, guys, everyone. Thank you for coming today. Super excited to be talking about Instagram. Um, as I mentioned, my name is Sahana, and I'm super passionate about Instagram, so I'm really looking forward to talking to you about it today. So let's dive right in, as we do have a lot to cover today. So our goal today is for you to know how to create an Instagram account, um, gain knowledge on creating effective and engaging posts, and learning to access and understand analytics. So what is Instagram? It is a visual-based app where followers share content in the form of images and videos with a small written description. It's very similar to other apps, but there's a strong, strong emphasis on visuals. 
Uh, you can like, comment, and share. There's messaging. There's Instagram stories, sharing, and an online store available as well. So is it any different from Facebook? Yes, it is. Um, although Instagram is actually owned by Facebook, um, these two platforms do serve different purposes. I would say that the type of audience you tend to find in Instagram tends to be on the younger side. And there's also a lot stronger emphasis on visuals in Instagram. Um, if you know Facebook, you tend to see the description first and then the image, whereas on Instagram, the first thing you are uh, seeing is the picture. And so then there's a strong emphasis on pictures and sort of the culture and uh, trends, sort of what strategies work on Instagram tends to be a little bit different from Facebook. But I would highly, highly, highly recommend that you connect both your Facebook and Instagram accounts together uh, using Facebook Manager. Um, this just makes life a lot easier, especially when you're posting content and looking at analytics. So why should small businesses start an Instagram account? Uh, definitely to raise brand awareness. You get access to a large audience on Instagram, um, especially the younger audience. And so you definitely want to get um, that reach. You also want to build credibility for your brand. Um, posting content and sharing what you offer really helps to build your brand image. Um, you can also increase your opportunity for user generated content. And that basically allows your followers to share their experiences with your business and sort of replicate an online version of word of mouth. You could also, um, if you do this effectively, creating an Instagram account and really um, having strong Instagram strategy, you can really lead to increasing uh, web traffic and your sales as well. However, a little tip to keep in mind, Instagram isn't uh, for everyone or it's not something that you must have just because you're a business. I would definitely say that if you think your audience is on Instagram and they use Instagram to um, interact with products and services similar to yours, I would definitely say uh, to get on Instagram. Um, and if uh, Instagram does take time and effort, so definitely um, don't start an Instagram account if you don't have that time and um, uh, effort to sort of put in the time to create those strategies and really maintain the account. And so just like a little quote that I like to tell people is having an effective Instagram strategy can help to really place your brand in your customer's mind so that when the time comes for them to make a purchase decision, it is your brand that they think of or choose over others. So that is sort of the point of Instagram is to really engage and sort of remind your customers that your brand exists so that when uh, they do come to make that purchase decision, um, it is your brand that they're thinking of. Awesome, so we are going to get into the basics. So how do you get started? So to get started, you would have to download the Instagram app. Uh, your business, you will be asked for your um, username. So you usually use your business name as your username. Uh, to do that, um, sometimes what tends to happen is that um, the username isn't available. So if you need to put your business name, someone else might, be, uh, might have taken it. If that is the case, you could just add either a period or an underscore after your um, username, sorry, after your business name, and that would um, allow you to have a unique name. Um, I would highly recommend that you do it after your actual business name, putting it in between your business name. For example, um, if you're a bake shop, if you put bake dot shop, it could really affect the searchability. So I would uh, recommend that you put bake shop dot uh, for your username. And then use an email address and phone number that you have access to so you can verify your account. And then lastly, you would want to click to um, edit your profile. So the first thing you would probably focus on is to upload a profile picture. So I highly encourage you to use the logo of your business, um, something clear and large and easily recognizable. Uh, use one that was created using a computer and not a photograph of your business logo. So don't take a picture of your business card or anything like that use one that was actually used um, created on the computer. Highly discourage the use of photographs of your store as well. The only reason I'm saying this is because um, the profile picture tends to be very small, especially when you're using your phone. And so when you take pictures of something as big as the, um, as big as your store, like it tends to not look very professional or clear. So I would um, highly recommend to just use um, a logo um, rather than a picture of your store. 
and have consistent branding. So if you have Facebook, if you have a website, just make sure that all your branding, all your logos, all your colors, all your um, overall image is consistent um, throughout all platforms. Now we're going to talk about bio. So um, what is bio? This is something you would find right under your profile and username right over here. So um, this is where you would um, explain a little bit about your brand and what you do. Uh, you would use keywords. So think of words that um, your followers would want to search when looking for a product or service uh, like yours and um, include that in your bio as well. And then you would also want to link, uh, attach a link to your website. So you're allowed to attach one link into your bio. Um, you could usually, a lot of people do um, their website but you could also use features like link in bio and link tree. These two um, features allow you to include um, multiple uh, links to um, make it easier for navigation purposes. Um, I won't be getting too much into it right now, but there is a resource available at the end of the presentation that you could sort of search and go into um, as for our details on how to get that feature. And then lastly, um, to appeal to your target audience, just use like slogans or emojis that sort of um, adds to your uh, appeal. All right, so this is just a few examples of how that would look like. So this is how your bio would show. Um, this is how you would edit the bio. And when someone searches for your account, um, this is how the bio would appear. So the last step I would recommend highly is to switch to a business account. It allows you to include contact information, gives you access to analytics and ability to use scheduling apps. So when you, um, the first thing you do when you create an account, it'll just make a personal account for you. However, um, when once you make that switch to a business account, you really get um, a few more benefits out of it and it's very um, important and, and can be a great benefit to businesses. Um, to do that, these are the steps to do it. So feel free to use this PowerPoint later. Um, to sort of as a reference to um, make that switch. Awesome, so now we're gonna get into content creation. So to do con so to inspire you or to think of content um, creation ideas, I like to ask clients to first understand one, their target audience and two, what sort of brand image and value they want to present to their audience. Um, I know a lot of the time you think or you feel that you are confident about who your target audience is, but I would regularly ask that you sort of research that and really get a strong understanding of your target audience. That could be easily by doing a survey or even just talking in person with um, your audience and asking them how they found out about your business, um, how they connect with your business, and just really understanding um, why they chose your business. That way it would really make it um, one easier for just any general marketing um, strategies, but it would also inspire how you can uh, engage with your audience as well. And so a few questions that are good to sort of answer in terms of your target audience is what are their interests? What is their lifestyle? What are their values and what do they advocate for? These could really give you sort of inspiration ideas as to what posts um, you can create. So for example, um, if I sell vegan milkshakes um, and I know that my niche audience is very healthy and like to um, be fit and are very interested in um, uh, interested in the healthy lifestyle, then I would be um, creating content that would um, you know maybe include uh, healthy eating recipes, um, why my vegan milkshakes are good and what sort of goes into it and what are the health benefits of it and sort of share those like different ways rather than just presenting the product itself. And your brand image and value. So what makes you unique? Um, how do you want to make your audience feel and what can you offer that uh, offer that your competitors cannot? So um, if you want to make your feel if you want to make your audience feel empowered then that's how your like posts should make them feel. Um, if you uh, offer some specific services that other companies don't offer, you would want to make sure to sort of mention that in your posts as well. And um, 
just kind of understanding your brand image and having something unified would really help to um, create content um, that is uh, that it, that is um, attached to your brand image and value. So the answers up to these questions can really help to inspire what content you can post. I highly recommend that the main focus of your page should not be just to share images of your products, but to tell an overall story. But the word storytelling or just telling a story can always be like kind of confusing. Even I kind of get confused about that. Um, but that just means to share your product in an interesting way, way rather than just um, posting a picture of the product itself. And so how do you do that and um, how do you make it engaging? Here are a few post ideas. So um, here are a few pictures of products and services. So that's definitely one um, content idea is to post pictures of your product and or services. Um, but also think of how you can make it creative and different so that it stands out and grabs the attention of your audience. One thing you can do is to um, use design. Um, you can design your posts to make it um, pop more and just gain your uh, audience's attention. To do that, you could use a free um, designing tools such as Canva, and we actually have a webinar coming up on that. Um, my colleague Akila will be presenting that topic, so I definitely highly recommend you to join that webinar. Um, and you can create really easy to, um, it's really easy to use that tool to create designs and um, really make your posts um, pop. And I would also recommend showing images where the product is actually being used um, and it's actually in action, so um, that it's more relatable and people can see themselves using it as well. And just think of creative, interesting ways to present your um, product. So if you think of different angles, using different subjects, um, including different props, changing the lighting, um, just anything like that to make your um, products pop, it would really make you sort of stand out against uh, sort of other posts and um, competitors. Um, next is to create tips and advice, or maybe do an ask me anything kind of session. Um, this really is, it's presenting useful information, and so your customers will really um, benefit from this and will want to engage more with your brand when you provide useful information. And so think of what um, your customers come to you for advice for. You're definitely the expert of uh, sort of the product and services that you're providing. So think of any advice or tips you can provide. And this doesn't have to be some complicated, super long post. Something super easy, quick to read, quick to understand is what um, users like to see and like to um, watch. So definitely, if you can think of tips and advice you can provide your customers, um, that's a great, great post idea. You could also do a do a, um, an ask me anything session, which basically means um, you can put out, um, you can let your customers know that, hey, I'm doing a little um, ask me anything session, ask me any questions that you're curious about, and on the next post, I'll be answering those questions. Uh, that really gets your brand to sort of um, interact with your audiences and really answer questions that your um, customers are curious about. You could also do interesting facts, uh, do it yourself, quotes, questions, again, um, thinking about your uh, audience's interests and how you can relate to that. Um, if you can think of, if you're selling products and you're thinking of how to do a uh, do-it-yourself gift guide or um, creating interesting facts, or if you have some special facts about um, the products that you're selling, definitely include those in your caption. It really makes you sort of um, interesting and more engaging. Tutorials, um, including tutorials, how something's made and behind the scenes are super duper popular. I would highly encourage that because um, it's just something addicting to watch, even for myself. And I would highly encourage you to do that. So um, it doesn't have to be super fancy, just taking a, uh, taking your phone, setting it up, and just taking videos of how you make something um, just like that is super um, fun to watch. I would um, recommend that you use um your instagram uh explore page to explore what how other brands are interacting with their audiences and if there are certain types of styles that they use in terms of taking their videos um if those are like getting more engagement you know that those are the types of styles that you want to sort of um, create for yourself as well um that's a great way to understand or create posts that are really engaging is to 
go into your um, explore page and search up other um, businesses and see how their videos are interacting with their audiences and which is receiving the most type of engagement and sort of creating that, um, but using your sort of brand image and brand voice. Um, jump on a trend. If there's a trend that um, you're able to sort of connect to your brand, definitely jump on that too. Um, that sort of gets you to um, really reach more audiences that way as trends tend to be just videos that um, a lot of people are engaging with. Um, special seasons uh, and special days. So um, if there are seasons and special days that are um, unique to your sort of business, definitely uh, use that to showcase in your business. So um, special days uh, refers to sort of anything that um, could uh, apply to your business. So for example, if you're a pet store and you want to um, address the pet day or um, dog day or cat day, any of those sort of special days, you could um, make sure to sort of address those days and maybe do a quick giveaway or special deals or discounts. Um, season, so Christmas, New Year, Valentine's Day, all these seasons are super popular, good time to sort of interact with your audiences, maybe offer a few special deals and uh, just showcase how your products can sort of relate to those special days. Uh, you can also show how you are advocating for different causes, or are supporting different causes. Um, if you are supporting a food drive or if you are supporting a specific cause, definitely showcase that and show um, sort of what your stance is on the issue and just share sort of um, how you feel about uh, and how you're supporting that uh, business as well. Uh, last sort of four ideas. Um, so you can do giveaways, challenges, influencer marketing, and collaborations. So these four um, tactics tend to be, um, you have to put a little bit of money towards it, but um, it also helps you increase your reach and really um, get more followers. So um, giveaways are a great way to showcase your products and give away your products to your sort of loyal customers. But in exchange, your customers and your followers are expected to follow your page um, you should ask them to like the post and tag people so that your product is being shared to and exposed to their followers as well. Um, it's a really great way to increase your reach and um, really get into sort of these other uh, niches and other um, groups of people by using your followers currently. I would also encourage challenges. Um, this tends to be if you have a loyal following, but if you sort of create a start a challenge, you could encourage your followers to sort of continue the challenge and ask that they mention someone else to sort of um, keep that challenge going. Um, you might have known about like the ASL aspect of challenge and other challenges in the past sort of um, really having a great success and reaching a lot of audiences. Um, not all challenges will be that popular, but I definitely encourage that if you do have a loyal customer base to take advantage of it because it kind of encourages your um, followers to um, share the experience with your product or just um, build a bigger and stronger community. Uh, influencer marketing, that's another, um, it might be a little bit on the expensive side in terms of just investing um, in asking an uh, influencer to share your product. Uh, that being said, if they have a really good, strong, loyal customer base, it really gives you access to that uh, customer base and allows your product to be known to them. And um, I would definitely take advantage of that. And if you're wondering how you would sort of find influencers, there's two ways. You could use your Instagram page to sort of search for influencers and um, find people that, uh, influencers that have similar interests as your customers, or you could use um, you could use influencers through um, agencies or managers. Um, influencers tend to have managers, so you would probably have to connect with them. Um, but definitely encourage you to sort of um, talk to influencers so that you could sort of have your product um, shared with their audience as well. And then lastly, collaboration. So collaboration, um, I like to just mention to clients, if there are other businesses that serve the same niche that provide different types of products. So for example, if you sell um, bridal dresses, 
Um, you might want to maybe partner up with a um, floral shop in your community or in your area. And that way you're sort of being exposed to their followers and um, you can expose your partner business to your followers. So that way you're sort of combining followers and really um, getting access to more followers and more reach. So these are four other great ways to sort of increase your follower reach and um, just really push that follower um, growth. So this tip right here, it's um, Instagram theme and color scheme. Um, it's basically adding to uh, your overall image. Um, as you can see, these two pages, one is more golden, the other one's gray. What does this add to the page? It kind of makes it look more professional and very um, appealing to see and look at. And so um, if you are able to sort of um, pay attention to that when you're thinking of um, pictures you're taking, sort of think of pictures that align with your color scheme or color theme so that your page sort of looks professional overall when um, new customers come onto your page. Lastly, make videos and stories highly, highly, highly encouraged. I know I'm encouraging a lot of things uh, throughout this presentation, but I definitely um, encourage um, videos and stories. Um, again, these videos do not have to be complicated or fancy or anything like that. You could easily just grab your phone and just take a quick video, um, one that just showcases how you can sort of provide tips or um, advice uh, in any sort of expertise um, or area of expertise. Um, also use Instagram stories. Um, now stories is uh, available on a variety of social media platforms. Um, originally it was available on Instagram, but now it's available on every other platform. Um, definitely take advantage of stories. It's a great way to engage with your customers. And we actually have a webinar on stories um, and how to sort of create content for that. Uh, coming up soon, so definitely sign up for that if you want to learn more about how you can uh, create stories. It's done by done by my colleague Mona, so um, definitely join that um, webinar as well. And then lastly, here are just a few questions to sort of keep in mind in terms for inspiration for your content. Um, the first bullet point is the most important one: is like, what advice do they come to you for? So are your customers coming to you and asking you for advice or ideas for anything? Um, that tends to be the most sort of engaging sort of content that you could post um, because that tends to be information that's super useful and um, followers want useful information. Um, you can also think of interesting facts and um, sort of history or did you know facts about your products um, that again adds a little bit more um, interest to your products rather than just being um, the name of your product. Uh, you could also connect with your products through their interests. So are they particularly interested in do-it-yourselves, recipes, or any trending topics? Um, definitely use that to your advantage. And lastly, um, do your customers see themselves using it? So using relatable pictures and scenarios where they can see themselves using the product itself. So now you have your post ready, um, but before you post it, or before you press that post button, here are a few things you want to make sure you include. So um, every picture comes along with a caption. And in your caption, although you put your description or your advice or your tip, um, make sure you have a call to action at the end. So this call to action can easily be um, visit the link in the bio, leave a comment below, like, comment, and share to enter the giveaway anything like that, just so you're encouraging your users to really engage with your posts. Does it mean they'll necessarily do it? No, but at least you're putting that in their minds to like actually engage with your posts and um, share um, their opinion. And you can easily sort of um, entice that by maybe um, asking a question or um, once again, just making it easy to click on the link in the bio and making it easily accessible. Next is hashtag. This is a popular question. A lot of people have um, how many hashtags do you include? What type of hashtags do you include? Um, honestly, uh, think of hashtags that are relevant to your industry. Um, sort of think of five big and um, maybe the rest specific that are uh, relevant to your business. So what I mean by big is think of uh, hashtags that are usually popular or really popular, and you can usually find that by going into um, the search um, 
engine in your Instagram and just looking up uh, what hashtags are receiving a lot, a lot of uh, content. And then think of ones that are specific to your niche and specific to your products. Um, and an easy way to sort of find out what um, those words are is to use a keyword um, tool. It'll be available in the reference section. Just um, refer to that to sort of look at what words people are searching up. Um, a prime example is um, Toronto photographer versus photographer Toronto. There's actually a huge difference versus um, which word that the uh, customers look for. So Toronto photographer is more common than photographer Toronto. So you just want to make sure that you are using the correct keywords. Um, how many do you include? So um, in total, you could include 30. Um, I would say at least include 10. Um, there isn't a set rule. There are posts that are successful with just two hashtags, but um, I would say take advantage of the hashtag um, feature and just include at least 10 to 15 hashtags. And where should they be located? Um, there is always that um, debate if it should be included in the comment section or if it should be included in the caption. Honestly, it doesn't really make a huge difference. Um, just know that if you do include it in the caption to um, press enter a couple times so that it, um, so your hashtags are near the bottom of your caption. I'll show you an example in the next slide. Um, and one other quick tip is just make sure any of the hashtag you are using isn't um, related to anything negative. So you can easily do that by just searching the hashtag before including it into your um, post because sometimes you'll be surprised that different words might have actual uh, negative connotations, um, might be slangs for something bad. So just make sure to check that before you include it in your post. Uh, so as you can see, the first post um, includes a question. Um, so this kind of gets people to answer the question in the comment section. And over here, if you look all the way to the right, as you can see, all these hashtags were included near the bottom. So they pressed enter about four times and then included the hashtags near the bottom. This just makes it look more professional so that um, people's eyes will go directly to the actual caption rather than having a big block of um, content in the caption. Uh, geotag, this is where you um, attach a tag that is specific to the location of your business. Um, to create this, if there isn't one already created, to create this, you would go into Facebook. Um, there is a tutorial available um, in the reference section, the step-by-step -step video and blog. So definitely feel free to use that to um, create a location geotag. Um, you could include your geotag, or you should include your geotag in every single post. Um, what this does is that if someone clicks on your geotag, it allows uh, them to see all the posts that are under that geotag. So then people can see other people's um, experiences with your products. So I would definitely um, encourage you to use uh, geotag. And um, you could also use geotag to click on the geotag to see who else has used your geotag. So are your followers using your geotag? And if they are, you would uh, use this feature to sort of go into their posts and like their posts and comment and say thank you for your um, Thank you for purchasing this product. Um, it was really nice um, having you use this product or just saying uh, thank you for coming into the restaurant or anything like that, just thanking them for their support. And lastly, make sure to tag others. Um, it's just courtesy um, to tag everyone in your post um, just so uh, they know who they are or, and um, it's just something you have to do. Um, so here is sort of, an example um, of how a geotag is. So this is where the geotag is located. And once you click on the geotag, this is how it will appear. And then everything under that geotag will appear underneath. Um, it's a great way to sort of find who else is um, tagging your business. And you can click on their business. Uh, you can click on their content and sort of um, interact with them that way. And this is sort of how you would um, add the geolocation um, on your posts. And so analytics, these are four um, great points to think about analytics. So analytics is accessible in insights. Um, again, you can find that information in um, the references on how to find it on your Instagram page. But once you do, you could um, pay attention to uh, four of these things, which is which type of posts are receiving the most attention. So if there's a certain style of post 
receiving most attention, I would encourage you to keep doing those kinds of posts. Which time of day do you uh, most of your users engage with your content? If there's a specific time and day um, that they are more, um, if they're engaging with you even more, I would definitely encourage you to post only during those times. Um, and then just see your follower growth. Are you growing month to month, week to week? Um, if you're just staying steady, is there something you can change about your strategies to make that follower growth um, increase? And lastly, um, how many people are tagging your content? Are uh, more people sharing their experiences with your product? This is a great way to sort of see um, how people are ex um, experiencing your products and how they feel about your products. So this is something, uh, this is how it would look like once you click on analytics. So as you can see, you could see who followed you and unfollowed you and when they did that, maybe some certain type of uh, post they didn't like and they unfollowed you, or honestly, they would just um, unfollow you. Or if there's more followers um, on a particular day, it might be because a certain type of post um, really encouraged them to follow you. Um, you can see things like their audience. So like what type of audience do you have? What age group? Um, again, what type of day are you receiving more engagement um, in specific times? So these are really um, helpful in terms of when to post your um, posts, just to make sure that you are um, getting the most engagement possible. And that comes into almost our last slide. So these are other features to definitely check out. These uh, features are a little bit advanced, but um, not complicated, not overly complicated. Um, see how you could use these features to really um, enhance your presence and if it serves your business really well, I would definitely um, encourage you to use them. So there's things like Instagram Live where you could start a live um, video and, and um, engage with the customers live so that they can send you questions, you can answer questions, you can do activities together, things like that. Um, Instagram Stories, as I mentioned, we do have a webinar coming up on that, but it's a great uh, tool to create mini videos that are interactive. Um, and then we have IGTV. Um, again, this is where you can post longer videos um, something similar to YouTube, um, but more specific. This is specifically for Instagram. Then you have the Instagram store and product tagging. And this is a great, um, this is a great feature for anyone that's selling products. Um, if you do set this up, it kind of makes um, navigation really easy for um, your customers, especially when they see the post and they really want to buy it. It sort of um, gets them to buy it easily and quickly. And so if you want to invest in that, definitely look into it. Uh, social media scheduling app, um, it's a great tool to sort of um, have your uh, posts planned ahead of time. You can stay efficient and, um, and also just be more um, active this way. That way you can post, uh, you can plan your posts for the rest of the week or even a month ahead of time so that you're not, um, you're, you're not having to post something on the day of. And lastly, Facebook Manager, um, if you, um, I would highly recommend you connecting both Instagram and Facebook together and using Facebook Manager to your advantage to post content and really keep track of uh, both accounts at the same time. And here are some resources. So as uh, Anna mentioned, you will be getting access to um, this PowerPoint and you can feel free to click on any of these links. Um, I try to include both blogs and videos so that um, whatever works best for you, you can definitely get into um, more detail and more information as to how to do any of these um, things that we discussed today in the presentation. So as Sohana mentioned, we are taking um, questions right now. I do see a couple that came in. Um, so can you, and I know you touched on hashtags, Sohana, but uh, we have a question here. Can you please share strategies for finding most effective hashtags? So maybe just uh, recapping that a little bit. Yeah, for sure. So uh, one technique is to go into the explore page of your Instagram accounts and searching what hashtags already exist and which ones are receiving a lot of um, engagement or a lot of posts. That kind of gets you to see which um, sort of uh, hashtags are really popular. But another way to do is to use a keyword uh, tool that's available for free, usually on uh, Google. And if you go into those um, keyword searches, you can sort of look into what keywords get the most search and use those to inspire you what type of um, hashtags to create. Also, just make sure um, to sort of have those keywords in mind in terms of what are your customers thinking of when they need a product like yours or a service like yours. Kind of put yourself in your customer's mind to sort of um, think of those hashtags. Awesome, thank you. 
Um, another question here. Can you post 10 to 20 videos um, on the same day or do you do two a day? I'm making a few um, at once and not sure how the algorithm works, if you should spread them out. Okay, so uh, this depends on if you're posting it on, on your actual page or your stories. So if you are pay uh, posting it on your actual page, I would recommend not posting all at the same time. So if you have 10 videos, I would just recommend posting one or two, um, just spreading out your content um, because if you do it all at one time, you might not get as much engagement and um, you really want to not tire your sort of customer base out. You kind of want to have them actually engaging with the post. So spreading them out a little bit um, can really help to um, increase that engagement. Um, however, if you're doing it on stories, that's a different case. You can uh, do multiple videos at the same time on stories, um, since that sort of um, the strategies on stories is a little bit different. Awesome. Um, let's see here. What scheduling apps and analytic apps do you recommend for Instagram? Awesome. So this is a good question. Um, I would say a few that um, are common are Later, um, Hootsuite, Sprout Social. Um, these three are great. Um, in the resource page, I'm going to include um, why these three are different and sort of thinking about um, like if it's a user friendly. So are you able to sort of use it easily? Um, the, is it the price plan? Is it um, something that you are able to uh, invest in? And um, is it providing you the information that you need in terms of analytics? So um, paying attention to these three, you can really understand which type of um, social media scheduling apps you can invest in. And I usually personally like um, later for um, businesses. Yeah. All right. Um, I guess. This so, oh, sorry. Yeah. Can I jump in, Santa? Can mm -hmm. you um, drop that link? It's if that's yeah. possible into For the sure. chat. The other one that I use is Plan That. I don't know if you've ever used that, and uh, that's for helping to plan your grid. You still have to actually post on Instagram, but it's really nice and it helps build out your hashtag strategy too. I mm -hmm. will drop that in. There is a free trial. That is a paid. A play, paid plan moving forward, but most of these do have free trials. Um, I will send that in. Yep. Another question: What is the social around posting or sharing personal or family experiences? So, should people have two uh, separate accounts, one for personal and one for business? Uh, yes. Um, depending, so this is kind of um, depending on what type of business you are. So if you are a business that is um, your actual personality and yourself is a part of sort of that business brand, um, I would say just allow yourself to share that information, like share your personal life and things like that as part of your business. However, if you're, if it does not contribute to the actual brand and the brand voice, um, I would highly recommend having it separate. Um, you could use your brand, um, your business account to share behind the scenes, your employees, your overall company, things like that, but don't share your personal information or your personal um, lifestyle on that brand unless that is part of your brand. If you are um, a specific hairstylist and you're part of that brand, you might want to share that um, personal life, but if it's separate, then keep it separate. Yep. And I think what in terms of what people can expect when they come land on your page, you can also put that in like your bio and stuff. Kind of mm -hmm. give like that vision sort of statement in in your bio as well, just so that people know what what to expect. Um, and the the expectations on that, just to add to that, is that people are looking for brands to be more human. Mm -hmm. So you do want to add in a human aspect to it, but you also have to be careful, right? You're not going to show your family around Thanksgiving dinner table <laughs> if you're selling bath products or something like like it's just it has to like you said, it has to support your brand. So just to be careful. Yep. Um, how many Instagram posts do you recommend a week minimum? Okay, this is um, honestly the quality over quantity. Um, it is highly recommended like you should like be posting often, but not just anything and everything. Um, I would say one post every day uh, for every day of the week is great. Um, kind of gets you interacting. And if you can do uh, one post on your Instagram account and then one story uh, to go along with it as well. Um, but 
if it's just any random thing that you're posting, um, just try to think of good quality content that um, is actually engaging. So one per day would be great. Yeah. And whatever you decide to do, and this is where it's hard, just to be realistic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> don't, don't do it just because someone else and be consistent. So if you do commit to two or three a week, stick to two or three a week or whatever exactly. it is. Um, so if you have been using Instagram for your business already, but now I want to rebrand and use a new theme, do I delete all my old posts or should I start um, a new look and leave the old posts? Um, again, this is depending. Um, I tend to just make that transition. Um, you know, your old content does contribute in somehow. If it's something where it's like completely on like professional and it's like just not, doesn't make your brand look good, um, then maybe, but um, you, you could just slowly make that uh, transition. And honestly, at some point, you're just going to get into um, having so many posts that that um, all those old posts will not appear. And so then you'll be fine. So just uh, make that transition so that you're not losing all those um, just engagement and interactions with your clients. Um, so just make that transition. Yeah. Um, so with all the, um, sorry, there's so many questions here. Uh, can we change the Instagram handle down the line or do we have to stick to the one that you selected um, initially? Mm, this is, it would be your call, but what you would be wanting to think about is if you created a brand and you created a name, um, something that's memorable, you don't want to be switching it in the middle of it because what tends to happen is your followers won't be able to find your search you. So um, keeping that in mind, um, if you think that like your hashtag is outdated or something negative is um, attached to it and you want to change it, then go for it. But um, you do realize that like that um, tag is something that is memorable and people are thinking of that. So you, making that switch can just be a little bit confusing. Um, so this is, a, I guess, a question around scheduling. Can we schedule a post to send later um, at a later date and time? And is there a possibility to repeat them every few days? Every few days, um, you would just have to enter it multiple times into it. Um, how how it works is that you would basically have a calendar and you would um, attach photos and the description that you would like to post um, ahead of time. So you can do it a month ahead, um, two months ahead. I recommend doing a month ahead just so you are kind of keeping up with trends and things like that. Um, and if you want to make those posts repetitive, um, you would just have to enter that same image and description again. Um, but uh, just try to come up with some more unique and different ideas for sure. Yeah. I think I think um, if you are sort of repeating the same like graphic and the same content, um, you can we can all see that on your page when we land there. So if we see the same graphic kind of like those are the same squares being filled up, um, you can also think about it um, how you would sort of react or what you would make of it if you landed on a page like that. Um, and if I'm clicking on all the squares and it's telling me the same thing, um, I don't need it. Uh, said to me like multiple times. Um, so I think the recommendation here would be to change it up a little bit, change your graphic, change your messaging. Maybe your call to action might be the same every mm -hmm. time, but maybe it's a different story. Maybe it's a different tip that you're giving, but the call to action is the same and your graphic can change accordingly too. Mm 